so I consider myself an artisan musician right now. And I think a lot of us are artisan musicians at this level. And that may lead to something much bigger, supposedly much bigger, but I gotta tell you, it doesn't take make much money at a low level to beat out what you would make if you had a gold record. Because if you had a gold record, you'd still be 70 grand in debt to the record companies. And in fact, if you make one dollar and it's a one dollar profit, you've made more than somebody who's su supposedly famous. Before you get to be rich and famous, you have to be poor and famous, unfortunately. And, um, and so that's the problem with the record companies. And I, you know, I don't say stay away from the record companies completely, but make sure you do it on your terms. Build your own following first. And if you've got 30,000 people that happen to be following you, the record companies are going to come to you and you can cut a deal wherever you need them, distribution or promotion or something like that. You don't have to fall for a 360 deal that's going to screw you six ways to Sunday that's going to take money from every single thing you could possibly sell. You don't want that. You want to be in control. And you get that control by building your own following first. So let me start with three basic principles. And if we've got time, something's going to put a spin on that principle, on those principles. So internet or no, one of the most important things that you can do is to build a list. It's the concept that I simply call the list. Extremely important. I know musicians who've gone out and played piano bar for you know 15 or 20 years, and for many of those 15 or 20 years, made seventy thousand dollars a year, and they did great because they did their thing. But they didn't collect a single name, and because piano bars have kind of died off right now, they're sunk. They can't get any work, and nobody knows who the heck they are. If they've been collecting names all that time, they would have thousands of names that they can turn to and people whose memories they could play on and ways that they could uh, market their music. And, and if you've got a lot of following, you can get yourself into a club, a lot of different clubs. It doesn't even matter what. If you can say, I can bring 50 or 100 people in every time I play, you can play just about anywhere. So there's lots of ways to capitalize on this thing. But without that list to contact everybody, you're dead for that. Now. That list can be held or built in a number of different ways. It can be an email list. It can be what you uh, call your friends on Facebook or MySpace. But they better be a little more connected than just this going out and, hey, listen to my music. Now, you've got to make connection with people. You've got to get them invested in you. You've got to make um, a fan out of these folks. And so you can collect tens of thousands of names. I've got 40,000 people following me on my two sites on MySpace. It doesn't mean anything because only about, you know, maybe 75 really count as people who are following me. On Facebook, I've got a thousand people who are following me quite closely and they're worth far, far more than the, the group as a whole on MySpace. If you're following my, on me on MySpace, I'm not disparaging you, so I'm just telling you that, that the, the group as a whole is a very large group, but not a very concentrated bunch of followers because of the way I years ago went around about collecting them. So, the list, absolutely crucial in building that list. And right now I'm talking strategy, so maybe we're not getting into tactics at the moment. We could talk perhaps a little bit later about some of the tactics about how you collect those lists. Um, I've got some ideas, and I'll bet Lisa's got some great ideas too. And maybe we'll get into some of that maybe in the Q&A if we, if we uh, uh, have time to do that. 